Bros, what's going on? It's Breacher. And I wanted to bring to you Zuldazar, Zuldazar, uh, the main horde capital that we are going to have in Battle for Azeroth. I usually record these with Andy, but as I've only just managed to finish this zone, and we'll get to that in a minute, uh, I thought it was worth re-recording just to include some extra thoughts into our original recording that we did the other day. When I say... And I haven't mentioned this enough. The size of the zones that we are getting in Battle for Azeroth cannot be understated. Let me put some comparisons for you right here, right now. Is that when the Legion Alpha came out, and once again we were presented with these dog shit turd characters that we wouldn't play, that are lower geared than, say, a boosted 110, fresh off the boat. It would take about four hours of leisurely gameplay to get a zone done like stormheim or whatever high mountain take about four hours ish maybe three and a bit and that's reading all the quests out exploring all the caves opening all the boxes killing all the rares pretty much doing everything in the zone zoldazar has taken about nine hours plus <laughs> i'm not exaggerating even though the factions are getting three zones apiece right we look at the zones we get Nazmir, we've already covered in a previous video, and Zuldazar that we're doing now, and the final zone that is yet to be released, which will be Valdun, the desert zone. Each one of these zones individually is about three times the size of a Legion zone. That's what they're giving us here. So if you want it to be, you know, it's those guys who are like, well, I'm only getting three zones, we have five, and that's one, and it's less. It doesn't work that way. Size matters, ladies and gentlemen. These zones are absolutely enormous. And Zuldazar in particular is certainly the more finished of the two we have available to the Horde. And even that is not finished. And I can tell you that without a doubt that this thing is not finished. As there are several quest lines that kind of just stop. And you're like... Mm -hmm. What's next? And you might think, God, these sound like imposingly large imposingly large like eight plus like if you're a speed leveler sure you can you can smash through this much quicker but if you want to explore it and take the zone in at least on your first playthrough something i always recommend that you do at least once take the zone in uh then you're going to be in this zone for quite some time before you move off using the mission board that's uh, available similar to what we had in legion where you can choose the next zone to go to so large is it impressive though it could be large or just full of gaff I don't know what's going on at Blizzard, I don't pretend to know, but one thing I can say is the difference in quality between the Horde Zones and the Alliance Zones is pretty drastic, in my opinion. In my opinion. The detail and simply level of quality of the storytelling aren't even close. And more importantly, the level of interesting quests that need to go on in the Zones. The Horde have considerably at the moment and i think this is important feedback for blizzard considerably more impressive interesting gameplay in their zones the stories are involved they're interwoven they cross over each other and everything that you do in one area of the map affects a different area of the map and more and things gradually unlock the alliance side now i have to put a caveat in here is the new alliance zone tiris guard sound is massively unfinished massively unfinished but i have pretty much 100 percent drust var besides one quest which you can't finish yet because it's a dungeon quest for a dungeon that's not in the game yet and it's just not even in the same league if i was to compare out of the four zones i played right now the horde zones would be pretty much neck and neck zuldazar and nazmir as being really good and stark contrast zuldazar is far more historic if you're a law head you're gonna love this place you're gonna have amani trolls uh the troll capital of course which is where we land as the horde we're after this zuldazar fleet so we arrive in zuldazar there's things going on with the king the blood queen uh the blood blood magics that have echoed through deathwing's destruction brought down during the cataclysm has shattered the blood gate allowing blood magic to seep back into zuldazar all the different troll factions that make up this enormous capital city and when i say enormous it's like five or six minutes 
to ride from one side to the other, starting at the harbour, moving through the central temple area, and then into the common grounds where all the different troll tribes are situated. And all the troll tribes are here. You're going to find the Amani there with statues of Zul Jin celebrating him, and you're going to find all these tributes to Zulaman in different areas, where you're going to find the people who worshipped the Zulaman bosses, and the Sand Furies, and Zulfarak are all going to be represented here. These are all these cultures that we've seen throughout WoW, all represented in one uh, one little area. And as I'm not a big lore head, but love the references to it. Very, very cool, very enjoyable. On top of that, they've mixed in Hemet Nessing, where he is here, my man. Which again is seemingly an unfinished quest line uh, involving him. It has a kind of conclusion. It might be finished, but it feels very abrupt. And similarly, they've had mixed in a lot of fun, which ultimately culminates in the Golden City Dungeon, which you've probably seen at Aldazor. And the lead at Aldazar, I should say. And the lead up to that is it just it's a constant war. And everything about the Horde Zone so far, including Nazmia, has culminated in these sort of epic final battles. Something which is definitely not happening on the Alliance side in either way, shape, or form. Yet, it might come. It might come. Remember, this is early days. This is still pretty good. Uh, but they've still not lacked on the humor. The big difference in Zuldazar and what makes it very special is, one, that it's very, very vertical, hugely vertical, and the temple itself overlooks pretty much the entire zone besides the actual dungeon itself, which you can kind of see peeking through uh, in the distance through the mountains because it is the only structure that is larger than the actual central temple. But all the way down to the ground level forests and things like that. And the uncovering of some items which are going to be more important later on in the expansion. And I definitely get that vibe. Uh, including some really comedy fun stuff. Blizzard haven't skimped on the comedy here. Uh, we've got an, a quest line in this zone with some gorillas that have... Uh, uh, the goblins, I should say, the goblins who have obviously arrived with the horde have discovered, I'm going to get the name wrong, I think it's Kedjamite, uh, the lore guys will know what I'm talking about, but for those of you who aren't into the lore, it is the substance that allowed the goblins to become very intelligent, and they found a new Kedjamite mine. Uh, currently it's overrun by gorillas who've been breathing in this Kedjamite vapor and are now super intelligent gorillas and they talk and things like that and it's comedy, it's absolute comedy um, and also that kind of sets up maybe we know Kazan is a dungeon later, is it going to be a case of these goblins get this Kedjamite uh, and then become all knowing or become too brainiac-ish and then they start building monstrous, monstrous machines and we're going to have to take those down looking forward to see where that pairs off because that quest line kind of ends abruptly for now and it says kind of come back later and we're going to see something pretty special there. Along with the giant dinosaurs, still maintaining that feel that we saw in Nesmia, uh, which you can ride on. You can ride on these giant dinosaurs and you can throw uh, rotten fruit at the, the annoying little uh, saurids, I believe they're called, the little tiny dinosaurs that you're kind of plaguing the city. I'm sure there's a daily quest to be had there. So far... I'm torn on which one I prefer. Uh, do I like Nazmia better or Zuldazar? But I just needed to get in here and just show you that, one, this zone is amazing. It's so beautiful. It's wonderful to traverse. Um, although it is enormous and you are on a ground mount, the way they've set it out has got proper road coverage. We're not in an Argus situation where you're constantly being dismounted and dazed. That's not happening. Despite the size of it, plenty of flight points. There's something like, I don't know, 14 flight points in this zone? Yeah, that's how many there is. There's like 14 flight points to get around because it is so large, it's so vast that they need all these connecting points in order to make it work. And as an opener to Battle for Azeroth, 10 out of 10, Blizz. Absolutely 10 out of 10. Loved this thing. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy it too. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.